Hello, Mr. Ganino here again with another chapter in our book, The Secret of the Old Attic by Carolyn Keene. We're on chapter three today. And before we begin, I just want to mention that permission to post an audiobook version of this book to YouTube was granted on March 27th of 2020 by Penguin Random House Books for use with Boy Spears Junior Elementary until June 30th of 2020. All right, let's get started. Chapter three, bad news. Thoroughly alarmed, Nancy and her friends at once abandoned their search of the attic and hurried down the steep stairway as fast as they could. What can be wrong? Bess gasped. Maybe Mr. March has fallen and he's hurt himself, Nancy suggested. George's face showed her concern. Oh, we must find him. The girls could not locate the man anywhere on the second floor. Descending to the first, they were relieved to find him uninjured. He was talking excitedly to a middle-aged woman. This is Mrs. French, the friend who's been looking after Susan, he explained quickly. He introduced the girls. She says my little granddaughter is seriously ill. He pointed to a pathetic-looking child who sat huddled in a large living room chair. Her face was red with fever and her dark hair tousled. It's not my fault, Mrs. French spoke up. I've been caring for Susan as I would my own daughter, but all of a sudden she seems to have come down with something. I'm sure you're not to blame for Susan's illness, Nancy said kindly as she went towards the little girl. Let's take Susan to her room and then phone for a doctor. I don't feel good, Susan confessed as Nancy carried her up the stairs, followed by Bess and George. You'll soon be in your own bed, then you'll feel better, Nancy said comfortingly. Poor little thing, Bess murmured. My eyes hurt, the child added wistfully, and I'm awfully hot. This gave Nancy an idea. When they reached the child's bedroom, she turned the lamp full on Susan. Measles, she announced, noting the red blotches. How well I remember when I had them. Same symptoms. Poor Mr. March, George whispered, what'll he do? He hasn't enough money to get his granddaughter a nurse, Nancy thought. And Mrs. French is moving soon and can't take her back. Aloud, she said, girls, do you remember Effie? That dizzy maid who works for your family once in a while, George laughed. How could one forget her? Nancy smiled. She can be very efficient as long as she isn't involved in a mystery. I believe I'll see if she can come here. This old homestead already has the markings of a mystery, George said significantly. Effie would be the solution to the housekeeping problem, Nancy went on. I hope Mr. March will agree to having her here. Leaving Bess and George with Susan, Nancy went downstairs to report to Mr. March. I'm glad it's nothing worse than that, he said when Nancy explained to him what the trouble probably was. Mrs. French was also greatly reassured. I'll call Dr. Ivers, Nancy offered, but Susan will soon be asleep, I'm sure. Bess, George, and I will take care of her for the night. Mrs. French, although eager to be helpful, seemed relieved to be able to pass on the responsibility for Susan's care. After Nancy had phoned the doctor and received instructions, she notified her father that the girls were staying. He offered to inform the Thanes and the Marvins. Well, as soon as Mrs. French left, Mr. March and Nancy went upstairs to see Susan. The child was resting quietly. Measles are not usually serious, Nancy remarked as they returned to the living room, but Susan will have to stay in bed for a while. What am I to do? The elderly man asked helplessly. I've never taken care of a sick child. Susan has always been so lively and healthy. I just don't know, Mr. March broke off in despair. This was Nancy's opportunity to mention Effie as a possible housekeeper. The problem of salary worried Mr. March. I have a surprise for you, Nancy smiled. Just before you called us from the attic, we found several fine old hat boxes and a table which can be sold. The money from them will take care of things for a while. Mr. March looked at Nancy gratefully. You've been so good, he said. I guess fate led me to your door to ask your help for little Susan. 
As soon as things get straightened out here, I'll go on searching for the music, Nancy promised. The girls tried to make Susan comfortable with meager supplies in the house. Nancy sat up most of the night, acting as nurse to the feverish child. After breakfast the next morning, Bess and George took over. Nancy drove to Effie's house. The maid, kind-hearted and loyal to the Drew family, was easily persuaded to take charge at Pleasant Hedges. She packed and left with Nancy, but when Effie glimpsed at the huge barren old dwelling, she almost changed her mind. Oh, oh, she wailed. What am I getting into? Another mystery? This old place looks haunted. I believe I better go home. Nancy finally convinced the girl to stay. As Effie began to work, her fears seemed to vanish. She and Nancy had stopped to buy food, and soon Effie was starting preparations for a hot lunch. I've done all I can for the time being, Nancy said wearily to Mr. March, declining his invitation to stay. Dr. Ivers will be coming soon. The girls and I are going home to get some sleep. You more than deserve it, he said. I never can thank all of you properly for what you've done. The girls put the table and the hot boxes in Nancy's car and drove away. Nancy dropped Bess and George off at their homes. Then she went on to the Drew house. You must be thoroughly exhausted, Hannah Gruen declared. I may spend most of the day in bed, Nancy said. Later on, I'll go down to Mr. Faber's antique shop and try to sell Mr. March's things. When Nancy had completed her errand late that afternoon, she came home with a sizable check for the old table and the hat boxes. Mr. Drew praised her, then listened attentively to his daughter's report on the situation at the March mansion. Dad, did you hear anything from the police? Nancy asked. He shook his head. I guess that without clues, we're going to have to forget the stone thrower. Nancy was up early the following morning. She had just finished a hearty breakfast when Hannah Gruen told her that Effie was on the telephone. Effie, Nancy exclaimed, I hope nothing is wrong. She dashed out to the hall to answer the call. At first, Effie talked so fast in such an excited voice that Nancy was unable to determine what was wrong. Effie, Effie, calm down. I don't understand a word you're saying. Has something happened to Susan? Oh, Susan is all right, the maid admitted in a quieter tone. Well, then what is wrong? Everything. Oh, I'm scared. I don't want to stay. Tell me what happened. Well, last night, Effie paused. Yes. I better not tell you any more. Please get out here as fast as you can. Nancy lost no time in driving to the old March homestead. Effie met her at the door. Let's talk outside, the maid whispered. I don't want Mr. March to hear me. He gets so excited if anything goes wrong. Nancy held back a smile. Effie herself often reacted the same way. She followed the maid to a corner of the lawn. Effie glanced carefully about her. Then in a half whisper, she began to tell her story. It happened late last night. I kept hearing creaking sounds and I couldn't sleep. So I got up. I was standing looking out the bedroom window when all of a sudden I saw a big, powerfully built man sneaking across the lawn. Had he come from the house? He must have. He came around from the back and stole off towards the garage. Then he disappeared. Oh, I don't like this place. Can't we take little Susan and go into town? We shouldn't move her while she's ill, Nancy said. After all, you don't know that that man was actually in the house. There isn't anything valuable here for, anything to, for anyone to steal. Well, I guess that's right, Effie said. And I saw to it that all the doors and the windows were to lock before I went to bed. Suppose we go around now and see if any of them were forced open last night. <clears throat> Which ones did you open this morning? Only the dining room and the kitchen. Together, Nancy and Effie inspected the first floor of the house. Mr. March was upstairs with Susan and unaware of their investigation. After each window had been checked and found to have been untouched by any intruder, Effie was greatly relieved. I guess that man wasn't in here after all, Effie said with a laugh. The maid returned to her work, 
Apparently no longer disturbed, Nancy was far from being satisfied. She went outside to examine the yard. To her dismay, she discovered fresh footprints in the soft dirt. They circled the house, then led away from a point near the former servant's quarters. Effie did see someone, she thought. But who would a prowler, and why would a prowler be interested in anything here? Again, Nancy followed the circle of footprints around the mansion. Then an alarming thought struck her. Maybe he has the skeleton key. Another idea leaped into Nancy's mind. Perhaps the trespasser had been looking for Fip March's unpublished music. He might be the one who had stolen the piece Mr. March had heard on the radio. And that is the end of this chapter. Join me again when we go to chapter four. Thanks. Bye-bye.